A young newlywed couple goes for a honeymoon in Europe, where they must face obstacles, some even threatening their marriage. The scene opens with Tom Lezak and Sarah McNerney coming out of the airport. They seem frustrated and irritated, as they try to overtake each other by any means possible. Once they part ways, Tom is in his car, furiously getting the gum out of his hair, which Sarah had thrown at him earlier. He is just about to pull out when she suddenly appears in front of him. She is unapologetic, yet asks for a ride and he unwillingly agrees to drop her off at her place. Their relationship appears to be broken beyond any repair, where they argue over small things. Tom gets back to his home, which appears to be a complete mess. His friend Kyle is in deep sleep and after trying his best to wake him up, Tom gives up and goes into his room. He listens to the voice messages he and Sarah had left when they were still in Europe. He can't help but feel bitter, as in the voice note they appear to be in deep love, completely opposite to the feelings they have for each other now. The message from a guy named Peter sends Tom into pits of anger, as he thrashes the telephone with his bare hands. Tom works at a radio station. He is there but keeps thinking about his marriage. He cannot grasp how their seemingly perfect relationship, which started better than any love story, is now on the brink of collapse. Tom blames his marriage for ruining their ideal romance. There, he gets a flashback to when he first met her. They are on the beach, and he accidentally throws a football towards Sarah, which ends up hitting her on the head. He rushes towards her, ready to apologize, only to find she has already forgiven him. From the start, they appear to be into each other, and as their conversation progress, Sarah reveals they had already talked or rather had an argument, when he gave her a false traffic report, causing her to be stuck in traffic for three hours. After talking, they share an intimate moment, which only makes them fall in love harder. Tom cannot focus on work. He is still regretting his decision to get married, and reminiscing about the good time he had with Wise. His friend Fred at the radio station advises him not to let his past haunt him, and start his life anew. Tom again gets a flashback, and he remembers Sarah's dog, Bags, who, for no apparent reason, appears to hold a grudge against him. He is pulling down on his leg to play, and Tom has had enough. He throws the ball outside the window, and Sarah's dog plunges out the window. Though unintentional, Tom is the reason Sarah's dog passed away. At his burial site, Sarah suspects Tom, when he over-explains the details of this unfortunate event, but is quick to apologize right after accusing him of foul play. Overcome with the guilt, he almost confesses, but when Sarah suggests the idea of getting married, he decides to not say anything. They promise to never lie to each other, but ironically Tom begins this new part of their lives with a lie. This mellow and gloomy day quickly turns into a joyous occasion, and they decide to share this news with Sarah's parents. She belongs to a rich family, a complete contrast to Tom's life. When Sarah's family hears the good news, they appear to be in shock, and lost for words. Her mom forces a smile, and welcomes Tom to the family. Her father also comes forward to congratulate her, but appears to be irritated, even unnecessarily scolding the guy for taking photographs of the exchange. Tom tries to give a tear-jerking emotional speech, but Midway realizes he isn't making any sense. All her family members watch in confusion, as he desperately searches for words. In the end, he gives up on the struggle, and settles on professing his love for Sarah in front of everyone. Prentice, a childhood family friend, stands up, letting everyone know he failed to seize the moment when Sarah was still single, and regrets that he preferred his work over her. He congratulates them half-heartedly, with sadness in his voice. This causes a stir of jealousy in Tom, yet he says nothing. Peter looks towards Sarah with affection, showing he still has feelings for her. Sarah's uptight father doesn't approve of him, and makes it clear throughout the day. Her family also doesn't truly accept him as he struggles to blend in. During the game, they try to embarrass him by pushing him when he is distracted. But Sarah comes to the rescue and helps him up. At night, Sarah and her mother share a moment where her mother advises her that marriage differs completely from being in a relationship. With marriage comes responsibilities she'll only be able to handle, when she truly knows that this is what she wants, and this is who she wants to be. Sarah convinces her that Tom has all the characteristics that she wants in a guy, and he is the only one she wants to marry. Her mother is happy with the response, and only wishes her daughter to be in a better place. Once she leaves, Tom sneaks out of his room and makes his way to Sarah's room. She welcomes her with a smile, but Tom seems dejected. He urges her to rethink if she truly wants to marry him or Prentice, who guarantees her a better life. But Sarah assures him she only wants Tom and accepts him, along with his flaws and imperfections. Soon after that, Sarah's father knocks on the door. Tom quickly hides behind the curtain, but forgets to tuck in his feet. Her father tries to talk her out of the marriage, but she makes it clear once again that she loves him, and that should be enough. At that moment, Tom coughs and her father notices his feet that he unsuccessfully tries to hide. He is disappointed but leaves the room. Sarah, with embarrassment, falls back into bed. The next day, they are at the church, which is filled with people, all eager to see the bride and groom. Kyle, Tom's best friend, who is also his best man, urges him to rethink his decision, and reminds him that Sarah still doesn't know Tom was behind her dog passing away. 
Lauren, Sarah's sister, does the same, by giving her advice on how to escape an unwanted marriage. Both of them pay no heed to unnecessary advice, and are ready to give up on anything, if that means they get to be with each other. Seeing Prentice at the wedding, Kyle suggests that Sarah may have had a relationship with him. Tom gets defensive and rejects even the idea of them together. Though Tom had asked her before, for which she had no answer. On the other side, Lauren is teasing Sarah that she could have had Prentice, when Sarah suddenly admits that she in fact, shared an intimate moment with Prentice. Just like Tom, she has also been hiding a secret from him. Lauren is surprised, but she suggests Sarah should forget about her past, and focus on what is right in front of her. Sarah regrets that day with Prentice, and feels guilty whenever she is with Tom. But Lauren strictly forbids her from ever telling him this. Their conversation is cut short when her father comes to get her. She walks down the aisle and there she sees Tom standing there, waiting for her. Once they see each other, nothing else matters to them. Everything is blurred around them, yet they see each other clearly. Both of them smile at each other with passion and love. After the wedding, they go to their suite. They are ecstatic as they jump and laugh on their way. Before entering through the doorway, Tom picks Sarah up but accidentally hits her head. She isn't phased by it, as nothing could douse her euphoria. Suddenly, her mood changes and now she looks distressed. Tom gets worried and asks her if she's okay. Sarah is overwhelmed with emotions. She tells him how she had always dreamed of this day and now, when it is here, her dream becoming a reality, she can't help but feel anxious. She is feeling emotions she can't explain. Although getting married has never been his priority in childhood, he still understands her. He comforts her. They don't have to get intimate if she doesn't want to. They have their whole lives ahead. His words make her calm, and they fall asleep. The next day, both of them wake up frantically only to realize that they have only an hour before their flight. Both of them get on the plane on time, with cotton pads in their noses because of the collision they had earlier. Sarah suggests they can have their moment on the plane, and signals him to follow her. Tom is stunned yet excited. Hastily, they open the door of the restroom but there is already a kid inside, who shouts at them. The air hostess approaches them and asks if they need something. They decline, but she is still suspicious of them. She knows they are up to no good. Still not giving up, they go to another one. From inside a man comes out and the smell is so unpleasant that they can't even breathe. They will rather stop breathing than go back to their seats and decide to enter the restroom. Once inside, they realize there isn't enough space for two. They struggle because of the small space and Tom's leg gets stuck. Outside, the same hostess is banging on their door, commanding them to get out. Sarah is trying to her best to free Tom's leg, but nothing works out. The air hostess doesn't give up and continues to shout outside. Sarah gathers all her strength, and through this havoc with clear determination, pulls his leg out. The door flings open and the hostess is hit in the face who had her nose glued to the door. Both of them fall out, but are relieved that his leg isn't seriously injured. They finally arrive and come out feeling giddy and cheerful. Tom finds out that Sarah can speak French, and is amazed by the fact. He never knew this before. The receptionist gives him the car key and Tom grabs it with excitement thinking he is going to drive the best car, but in reality, it differs completely from what he had imagined. During the drive, he continuously complains about the car. Sarah jokingly makes fun of him for being too American, which only makes him more irritated. He isn't focused on the road and when Sarah suddenly tells him to turn, they nearly have an accident. He comes out of the car and he is fuming with anger, as he blames Sarah for not telling him earlier to turn. She shouts back that she has been trying to figure out directions all by herself. As some moments of silence pass, they realize this is their first fight, and Tom feels apologetic. He promises they will never fight again and hugs her. She shows him the reason they had to turn, and it was because their hotel has arrived. Its beauty blows Tom away. The castle is filled with nuns, and the couple excitedly greets each one of them. They are overjoyed, and greet the receptionist with the same enthusiasm. The receptionist, who also is the owner, is surprised to find out that they are the honeymooners he was waiting for. They look apart from the other couples, as they are younger than them. He gives them a gift that has been sitting there for them. Upon reading the note, Tom finds out that Peter has left it there for them. He looks towards Sarah, expecting an explanation, and she reassures him he is just a friend and dismisses it. The room is better than what they had imagined. The bellboy enters, and Tom asks him about the satellite TV as he cannot see one in the room. Bellboy lets him know that there is one in the bar. He is more worried about the game than his wife, and the bellboy jokes about it in French, which only Sarah understands. She later tells him and he agrees that his focus should be only on his wife. Their moment is short-lived as she rushes to call her mother instead. Tom pulls out a toy his friend Kyle had packed for him. Sarah tells Tom to leave it as the outlet is different, but he is persistent and despite her protests, tries to push it in the socket. As a result, a short circuit happens. The entire castle goes dark, leaving everyone confused. Tom is electrically shocked but isn't seriously injured. The toy is still stuck to the outlet, and the alarm goes off. Everyone, along with the nuns and the couple, runs out in panic. The owner finds out that they were behind this mess, and asks them to repay the damages, which Tom angrily declines. Both of them, Tom and the owner, are extremely angry at each other, and after spending a minute throwing insults at each other, the owner throws them out. 
Sarah isn't happy about how he behaved, but Tom is sure that they will find a better hotel than this. The weather doesn't turn out to be in their favor either, and they drive through a storm. Every hotel they go to is filled with no vacancies. They are already having the worst day of their lives, when it also starts to snow. Tom is getting frustrated, and so is Sarah. Because of an incoming truck who has its flashlights on, he loses control of the wheel, and they crash. They are buried under heaps of snow and there is no way for them to get out. Sarah blames Tom for not handling the situation well, and Tom once again makes a comparison between him and Peter Prentice. Once they get the things off their chests and cool down, the anger disappears and they share an intimate moment. They spend the night in the car. In the morning, they manage to get out of the car, and are in awe of the picturesque scene that surrounds them. A car passes by and to get its attention, Tom throws a snowball at its rear window. But unfortunately for them, the driver of the car is a petty old woman, who in retaliation, pushes their car off the cliff and drives off. A truck driver gives them a ride, and they continue to argue over where they should go next. Sarah is clearly mentally drained, and suggests that they should ask her father for the money. Tom has pride and denies any help from her father, which leads to Sarah having a mental breakdown. Tom calms her down with his words, and convinces her to go to pension in Venice. They finally arrive there, and the place is a total slum, with creepy men staring at them. An old lady leads them to their room, which isn't any better. It's tearing apart. They cannot help but laugh at their situation. Again, they try to get intimate, but this time they break down the wall, and land on the bed of a couple staying next to them. They try to spend the night, but a cockroach on Tom's neck is their last straw. She asks her father for help and he does, but makes it known to Tom that he should repay him as soon as possible. Before sleeping, they again have an argument, when Sarah refuses to believe that her father insulted him. The arguments have increased and their relationship has started to crumble, but they are yet to realize this. The next day they go sightseeing where they have a good time, better than what they had for the last few days. They relish the moments and have fun. Sarah has an interest in history, whereas Tom's interests are completely different. He completely ignores her, and follows the sound of TV, which leads him to a cafe where his favorite sport is live on TV. She feels dejected and sad, but fakes a smile and lets him know that it's fine if he stays here. Tom feels bad and promises that he will make it up to her. She goes back to her hotel, where she is surprised to see Prentice. He acts equally surprised and greets her. When he invites them for dinner, she quickly becomes defensive and rejects it. Sarah sees him leaving and quickly rushes toward him to apologize. She lies to him she is having the best honeymoon, when in fact, everything around her has been a disaster. She leaves and Prentice pays the receptionist, to keep him updated on her. Tom comes back to their hotel room celebrating their win, only to find Sarah sitting on the bed sulking. She asks him the question he has been dreading the most. She asks him if he has been hiding something from her, but it is less of her asking him, and more of her projecting her own guilt. Upon hearing this, he gets a flashback of the incident with her dog and when she pressures him, he cannot help but confess that he had lied. Sarah cannot believe this and tries to leave the room, but Tom stops her and calls her out too. He can see that she is hiding something from him and upon being questioned, Sarah admits what she had been hiding. Both visibly distraught at each other leave the hotel, and go their separate ways. He goes back to the cafe where a girl named Wendy flirts with him. Sarah goes to a historic art museum, her comfort place to get her mind off the fight. Prentice follows her there, thanks to the receptionist, who tips him off. Though visibly distraught, she still tries to paint her failing marriage as perfect, and Prentice sees right through it. Sarah cannot hold it together anymore and starts crying. She asks Prentice to go, and he does, but he hasn't still left. He is waiting for her at the exit, and he feels concerned about her. He convinces her to leave with him, and promises to take her to Tom once she feels better. Wendy forces Tom onto the dance floor. Both of them are being pulled away from each other without their knowledge. Prentice takes her to one of the most beautiful estates in the whole of Venice, and there she meets the owner. He is a kind and intelligent old man. He reads her face and can see that she isn't on the best of terms with her husband. Gently he advises that in the start marriage may feel like a burden. Sometimes they will get mad at each other over small things but as time passes by, they will get to know each other as no one else does, and only then they will have the life that they imagine. Prentice sees this and cleverly interjects. In the cafe, Tom is stuck with Wendy, who isn't planning on letting him go. He makes up an excuse and jumps out the window in order to get away from her, without letting her know. Back in the hotel, he pays the receptionist to find out where his wife is, who will not talk otherwise. When he finds out that she has gone with Prentice for the evening, he is filled with jealousy, and goes back to the cafe he had just escaped from. Sarah is having a good time, but has way too many drinks. She suggests they should now go to Tom, as Prentice had promised. At the cafe, Tom offers to walk Wendy back to her hotel room. Turns out she lives in the same hotel. They get into an elevator, and she suddenly reveals that their rooms are even on the same floor. Tom finds this suspicious but says nothing. She quickly makes an excuse to come inside his room, 
and once she does, she pushes him in and tries to get intimate with him. Tom announces he is married. She is reasonably upset as she kicks him and leaves. Sarah has just returned, along with Prentice, who tries to get intimate with her, but she pulls back and slaps him. Tom witnesses this whole exchange and is filled with rage. He understands that just a few moments ago he was in the same situation, but still feels angry and shouts at her as soon as she enters. He interrogates her, but she clarifies that in the past she may have had feelings for him, but now she doesn't. Just when Tom is rambling about her cheating in the background, Sarah finds the clothes Wendy had left behind. Tom tries to explain, but there is no straightforward explanation for this. He sounds like a hypocrite and this only angers Sarah to the point where she throws an ashtray at his head. He falls down, and she goes to check up on him. At that moment there is a knock at the door and behind the door is Prentice. He is here for another chance but instead meets with Tom, who is ready to take his revenge. Tom chases Prentice around the hotel with a poker. The receptionist sees this and calls the police. Prentice dodges every time, but Tom continues to swing the poker at him. Before the situation gets worse, police come to the rescue and break up the fight. They are arrested. In the locker, they contemplate maybe everyone was right when they said that they weren't ready for marriage. Prentice bails them and they leave the next day. This time, the journey back is completely different. This time, they keep on fighting like an old couple throughout the flight. The flashback ends, and Kyle informs Tom that Sarah swung by the apartment and took all her stuff. The only thing she left behind was an album filled with their pictures. He goes to his father for advice. He tells him that hard days are the ones that bring the happiest memories. They act as an anchor in relationships and marriage is nothing without them. He needs to grow up and make mature decisions. Sarah only needs him, and he is clearly still in love with her. Tom decides to win her love back and drives to her place. Ewan, their butler, doesn't let Tom in even after he pleads. He is here only to talk with her. Listening to all the commotion, all the family members come to see what is happening. Tired of their behavior, Tom, along with his friend Kyle, decides to tear down the gate, but it turns out to be stronger than they had expected. Their car is completely broken down, but the gate still stands tall. Sarah looks through the window and sees Tom. She quickly turns on her TV. Defeated, Tom looks into the security camera and gives a heartfelt speech that he may not provide her with everything. But there is one thing he is sure about and that is that he loves her. The things he says come out of his heart as tears roll down his cheek. His words move everyone in the family. Just when he thinks he has lost, the entry gates open, welcoming him inside. Sarah is the one who opens the gate for him. Her father finally approves and tells his daughter to get him. Both run towards each other to meet in the middle. They confess how they have missed their moments together, good and bad ones. Her family watches with tears in their eyes, as they truly accept him now. 